Let us address some of the uh, virtues of, of uh, these last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He said, whoever recites the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah at night, and in one of the narrations it says after Salat Al-Isha, then they will be sufficient for him. Ibn Hajar said, they will suffice him in the sense that they will be a protection for him against any evil. And another, narration, another opinion says they will be sufficient from him from having to stand up in Qiyam al-Layl. And it, another opinion says they are sufficient as protection against the devils. And they will not be able to come near him. Another opinion said, this is all the saying of Ibn Hajra. He said, another opinion said that is enough for him as reward. Meaning their reward is so abundant. And then he said, and it can be that it will grant him all of these opinions. Uh, another thing is that it's a source of blessing. See, Surah Al-Baqarah in total is a blessing. The Prophet Sallallahu said, and it's reported uh, by Muslim, he said, recite Surah Al-Baqarah. For it is a source of blessing. Another thing is that it's a protection for the house against the devils. The Prophet Sallallahu said, and this is reported by an nasai classified as authentic by uh, Al-Albani. He said, Allah Azza wa Jal wrote a record 2,000 years before the creation of the heavens and uh, the earth from which he revealed the last two verses or brought down rather the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Never will they be recited in a house three nights, three consecutive nights and a devil can come near that house. So if you recite them three nights in a row, no devil can come near your house, let alone come near you and your family. It is a treasure, as the Prophet ﷺ said, and it is also reported by an Nisa'i, classified as authentic by uh, Al-Albani. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, I was given the uh, uh, ending verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, and they came from a treasure from under the throne of Allah Azza wa Jal. From under the throne. And no, uh, no prophet before me uh, received the like of which. And finally, uh, amongst its uh, virtues is that the dua in it is honored and accepted by Allah. And this is reported by Imam Muslim. Ibn Abbas said, one day Jibreel was sitting with the Prophet وسلم, and he heard a, uh, a sound from above in the heavens. So he raised his head, Ibn Abbas said, Jibreel raised his head. And he said, this is a gate that was opened in the heavens today and it was never opened before today. So an angel descended from that gate. And then Jibreel said, here comes an angel down to earth who never came down to earth before, today. So that angel greeted them with salam and then said to Muhammad sallallahu glad tidings to you with two sources of light. You were given and no previous prophet was ever given the opening chapter of the book, Al-Fatiha, and the last verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, you will never recite with a letter that is in them, except that you will be granted. Meaning, any dua in them, and the, which is the dua at the end of the surah, وَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَعْفُ عَنَّا وَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَرْحَمْنَا تَمَوْلَانَا فَانْصُرْنَا الْقَوْمِ Except that you will be granted that. 
we ask Allah's favor. And we ask Allah to enable us to recite it and recite his book and give it importance, if not more than worldly affairs, at least equivalent to our worldly affairs. Because I know that we give a lot of importance and attach a lot of importance to our worldly affairs. So if we attach this importance to the Qur'an, wallahi, our lives will change. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي لكم سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك